Hello everyone, it's Jennifer. So today I am doing a technique that I used a ton a long time ago. This is one of my all-time favorite techniques and I realized I hadn't done it in a while, so I thought I would share it with you today. And it's how to create a watercolor look super fast and super easy using distress inks. These cards also have like a pearlized shine to it and I'm gonna show you how I did that. And this is just so much fun and you can actually mass produce these pretty easily. Uh, using this technique. So I'm using some new stamps from Tim Holtz. Uh, these are actually the two stamp sets that I'm using. On the left is a blueprint stamp. I'm going to use the holly and the poinsettia. And then I'm going to use the greetings on the stamp set on the right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to make two cards at once. So you'll see me jumping between the two because I, um, I'm doing all the steps together on each of them. So anyways, you'll see me do it here. I'm stamping these with Versamark ink onto Tim Holtz watercolor paper. It's by far my favorite watercolor paper. It is super high quality and it works great with techniques. I'm going ahead and stamping this on three pieces. So I'm stamping the Holly image on three pieces of watercolor paper. If you don't have Versamark ink, the Tim Holtz Distress ink, embossing ink, works fantastic for this too. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on three watercolor pieces, and then I'm going to white heat emboss all three of them. So as part of the mass producing, I'm doing all these steps at once, and thankfully that ink stays wet long enough that I can add the white embossing powder to each. I'm using Hero Arts white embossing powder because it's a super crisp white ink or I'm sorry, white embossing powder that works fantastic and really looks good against the bright color we're going to add. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the poinsettia. I'm stamping it three times on three pieces of watercolor and I'm white heat embossing on each. So I'm going to end up with six different pieces here so that I can create two cards. Now I'm doing a lot of layering on this card. You could totally um, lessen how many pieces you do and how much layering you do if you want to save time. But I totally love the layered look and I think it's definitely worth the extra effort. Now that we have all of our embossed images ready to go, let's create our pearlized water. Now with this technique, you could use regular water in a mister, but I think by adding this pearl look to it, it makes such a big difference in the final results. It's just beautiful in real life. I wish you could see it in the video. You can kind of see that pearl shine that's on top of the color. I just love it, and it's so easy to do. I take a Ranger Mini Mister, which is a great little mister. I fill it with water, and then I take one scoop of Perfect Pearls. This is just the regular Perfect Pearls color that's white. I take a scoop about this big, and I put it in that full Mini Mister, and I shake the living daylights out of it. You can add more pearl if you want more shine, or less pearl if you want less shine. And I have kept a Mini Mister like this forever. I refill it when I need to. It's never gotten clogged. And look at this pearlized water that you get. It is great. You could do this anytime you want to do watercolor. You could use this water instead. It's absolutely beautiful. And that little bottle of Perfect Pearls is very inexpensive. So you could make this um, and use it over and over again. Or you can add reinkers to it for color mists. And I think it's just a much better result than buying any of those pearl mists that you can get. Now to add the color, I am using some mini Distress Inks. These are actually the new Distress Ink colors that they are releasing today. And I have it in one of the mini Distress Ink holders. I love these tins, they're fantastic. They pop right into these little spots. And I'm picking out the reds and the greens to create this card. You could use regular Distress Inks for this, but these minis are great because you can apply small areas of color. Now on my first piece, I'm going to take the greens. So I'll cut from this all of my leaves. So I'm using shabby shutters and pine needles. And look at this, it looks absolutely terrible. I'm not taking any care to blend it. I just want to put a ton of color down. Now I'm going to take my pearlized water and spray the living daylights out of this so much that if you picked it up and tilted it, it would pour off. Now watch, you see it looks terrible there, but we're gonna set it aside to dry and when we come back to it, I promise it'll be beautiful. Now we're going to do the same thing with just the berries in the center. I want those to be red. So I'm putting festive berries and aged mahogany. Just little touches of it. You can see it looks absolutely awful. We're going to make it look even worse <laughs> by spraying it with lots of this pearlized water. And again, we're going to set that aside to dry. Now on the third piece, this is going to be my background. I just want a soft blue kind of halo. So this time I'm using my ink applicator so I can put less color down. And this is the tumbled glass, which is a great soft sky blue. And I'm just putting splotches of it, uh, splotches of it around. I'm rubbing a little directly onto the paper, but I don't want too much color this time. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and mist this up. Again, lots of lots of water down here. You can move it around with your finger if you want, but I promise you, if you just set it aside and let it dry, it'll do its thing and it'll be beautiful when it dries. This is one of those cases that's going to look terrible at first, but I promise when it dry, it is beautiful. So let's do the poinsettia next. This time I am going. I have my poinsettia image. Again, I have three of these. For the first one, I'm going to put down lots of the festive berries color. This is just a beautiful red. So I've covered my entire image. Now I'm going in with some aged mahogany and just adding some kind of towards the center where I want the darker color. And then when I spray this, it'll just make all that ink move and blend on its own. Again, it's going to look awful but I promise when it dries it'll be beautiful. So you could use any distress inks that you want for these techniques. I really like the new colors of some great ones for holidays. You could use your big ink pads if you wanted to, but I really believe that by going directly to the paper you get more color. So I don't use my ink blending tool for these pieces because I really want a lot of color down. So that's shabby shutters. From this piece I'll cut out the leaves in the background. I'm adding a little bit of pine needles. You can see I'm not spending much time at all. I'm going to go ahead and let the water do the work for me and just spray it like crazy here. Now you could again use just regular water for this or you could try any of your mists that you may have that have some pearl shine to it. But again, I really like the perfect pearl um, water mix where I create my own pearlized water because you can use as much as you want and you don't feel bad because you can easily make more of it. I have one last piece to do, the third one for the poinsettia card. I'm going to take that tumbled glass again. Again, I'm applying it with the ink blending tool just so there's less color down. If you want a more intense background, just go ahead and take that ink pad directly to the paper. And again, we'll spray this one and set it aside. Now while all of these six pieces dry, I'm going to go ahead and do my greetings. So you can see on one of them it says Seasons Greetings, on the other it says Happy Holidays. These stamp images are from the stamp set on the right, another one of Tim Holt's new stamp sets for the holidays. I'm going to stamp these with Versamark ink and then gold heat emboss them. I'm doing it up against the edge of some white cardstock so that I can easily just cut them into little strips. I wanted to cut each word apart. I'm stamping both with the ink and now I'm adding on Ranger's fine or super fine gold embossing powder. This is a fantastic gold powder. Uh, it's definitely great for the holidays. I'm pouring it on over a uh, little coffee filter so that I can easily pour the powder back in the jar when I'm done. I'm zapping it with my heat gun. I have both of them against the edge because this makes it easier for me to cut them out. I'm using my Fiskars wire guide trimmer. This trimmer is great because watch, I can line my wire up right between the words and easily cut between them. It just makes it super easy for cutting thin strips like this around greetings. So now I have both my greetings ready to go and add onto the card. Now that my cards have had some time to dry, all six pieces, it really doesn't take that long to dry and I think it's better to let it dry on its own instead of heat setting it. You can see all the pieces here and the fun color and the pearl look that you get. So here you can see the red with that little bit of shine. The blues are real soft in the background and I love the mix of greens because we use like a blue green and then like a gr yellow green and so you get a lot of variation. Now if any of the ink dries on top of the white embossing powder, I just dab it with a baby wipe to remove it so that the white outline is nice and crisp or you can leave it if you want to. And if you find you had too much pearl on top of your um, ink, because when it dries the pearl kind of sits on top, if you find there's too much pearl on it, you can wipe some of that away with a baby wipe too. And now you can see that you get great shine, and even though it looked absolutely terrible when it was wet, it dries nicely. Of course, I'm kind of messy outside of the lines, but once we cut these out, you'll have a great watercolor look that really required no effort on your part because the water kind of did all the blending for you. So I'm going to do some fussy cutting here. I'm cutting the red berries out of one of the holly pieces, the holly leaves out of another, and then for the poinsettia, I will cut the red petals out of one of the images and then the green leaves in the background out of the other. And then we're going to do some layering. I have trimmed my background pieces to three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So you can see that nice soft blue background we get. Now I'm using a ton of foam dots here. I wanted to add lots of dimension to this. You could always glue this down flat if you wanted to without the foam tape. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my green holly leaves and look at that beautiful green that you got. Lots of great watercolor blending and you didn't really have to take any time to do it. 
it does take some time to cut it out, but I definitely think it's worth it. And there's something therapeutic about sitting there and fussing cutting. I don't know. Um, you could always use stamps that have matching dies if you wanted to save some time. And then I added the uh, little berries in the center. And look at that pearlized shine that you get with this soft watercolor background. Now for the poinsettia, I'm going to go ahead and add the leaves first. I just cut out the parts that are supposed to be the background leaves. And then I'm going to go ahead and add with foam dots once again the red petals that go on top of that. After I added the red piece, I decided that I wanted another leaf kind of tucked over there on the left. It seemed like it was pretty empty over there. So I just went to my scraps from my green piece, that kind of messy looking background, and I just cut out one of the pieces that was supposed to be a petal and I turn that into a leaf so you can see me cutting it out down there and then I'll just put some foam tape on that and tuck it in behind my flower and there I, I don't know for some reason I feel better now you know sometimes things kind of feel off kilter I don't know so anyways I added the extra leaf behind there and now I decided I wanted a little more um, green on my leaves so I'm taking my ink blending tool that I use for my mowed lawn which is a great Kelly green and I'm just rubbing it along the edges of the leaf. I don't know, I just felt like it was a little too washed out on this holly piece. So you can go back, even after you've done your watercolor, and add more color to it without losing that watercolor feel. So if it ends up too soft, that's something you can do to kind of add more color to it. Now I wanted a gold piece of cardstock to mat my final watercolor pieces. I wanted one for each card. So what I'm doing is just rubbing some embossing ink along the edges of two pieces of cardstock that are cut to four by four. And I'm adding on that same gold embossing powder from Ranger. Now I'm not worrying about putting it all over the whole piece. I just need it along the edges because this is what will peek out when I add this as a mat. So I'm shaking this on again over the coffee filter so I can avoid the mess and now I can just go ahead and tip it in to put all the rest of the powder back into my jar. And then I will heat set the edge and there I have a full go a faux gold paper or gold cardstock that will perfectly match that greeting that we embossed earlier. So I'm adding my watercolor piece to it and there you can see the little bit of gold that just peeks out the edge. It's just a great way to make your mat perfectly match the embossing of the sentiment that we're adding. I added each of the pieces to a note card that's cut to about four and a quarter by four and a quarter and it'll fit into a regular size envelope. Now there were a few finishing touches I did. I went ahead and glued down each of my sentiments on there using some foam tape, but I still felt like it needed something else. It needed some embellishments. So on the holly card, I added some little pearls just scattered around, but on the poinsettia, I wanted to add something to the center. So I used one of my Copic markers. You could use alcohol ink here if you want to. And I added some brown color to my pearls, which actually creates kind of a bronze or gold color. And I'm just going to add like a cluster of these, an imperfect cluster of these to the center of the poinsettia. Just gives it a little pop, a little bit of dimension in there. You can see what the final results look like. This technique is so much fun. It works great for coloring any, in any large flower or Christmas tree or whatever outline image you may have. The results are great and it's so easy to do. If you are interested in the products I use, I link below in my YouTube description to multiple sources, or you can go over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com. You can click here, and I'll have much more information there. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by giving it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching.